Let's watch Randeep from Punjab, India score a near perfect band aid for his performance on the IELTS speaking interview talking about the importance of the turban for Sikh people. Now let's watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. We are conducting this exam in Amritsar and the time right now is 11 in the morning. And this is candidate number 99543721 and examiner number 8591. I'm recording this for marking and clerical purposes. Now we shall begin. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. May I see your identification? Yes, here it is. This is the passport that I've used to register myself for IELTS online. Please have a look at it. Okay, and what is your full name? Uh, my full name is Randeep Singh. Please call me by my first name, Randeep. Okay, Randeep. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? I reside in a four-bedroom house in Amritsar in the state of Punjab with my family. What do you like to do with your friends? Mm, when I have time to hang out with my friend, I like to be active. I like to play sports. Just last Friday, I had an excellent game of tennis with my good friend Lavdeep. Let's talk about the family. How often do you see family members? Mm, I see my, my family member every day as I am living in house with my parents and two brothers. In fact, just my older brother just dropped me off for this exam about an hour ago. Who in your family do you spend the most time with? Uh, these days, I am spending most of the time with my two brothers. We are very close to each, about a couple of years apart. And they are like my best friend. We play sports together, watch movies and just hang out. What do you like to do with your family and why? Well, as I had just mentioned that I like to do physical activity like going on a good workout or hike as well as catching blockbuster in evening. My brother and I just watched uh, Uncharted last night in English, of course. Has the way you spend time with your family changed over the years and if yes, how? Yes, it has. I mean, I definitely used to spend more time with my family when I was younger. But now that I've matured, I spend more time uh, with my friends and family. Also, I used to spend more time playing games with my cousin. But nowadays, we are putting more effort or time to make a project like phone apps. If you could go on a trip with your family, where would you go and why? Well, uh, getting a chance to go on a family trip, I would love to go to Maldives because I've seen so many videos uh, that have been filmed in Maldives and it just look amazing. Spending couple of weeks uh, relaxing on beach would be perfect for me and my family to recharge our batteries and soak in the sun. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two for this. Rundeep does very well in part one and his band score is closer to an 8.5 or a nine. It's nearly perfect. He is calm and confident from the very start. Notice his body posture. His arms and his hands are up on the table and he's ready to project his voice and speak fluently and clearly. He answers all of the questions accurately and with detail. One of the repetitive mistakes made by Rundeep is the missing S from the ends of words to indicate plurals and possessives. When the examiner asks what he likes to do with his friends, he says, when I have time to go out with friend, instead of saying correctly, when I have time to go out with friends. It's these repetitive mistakes that lead to lower scores. One or two occasional mistakes, especially natural mistakes that do not confuse the listener are okay. However, frequently missing the S at the ends of words is a problem. See if you can count how many times this happens throughout the interview. And then tell us where you find these mistakes in the comments below. Let's see if you can find them all. Now, let's continue. For this part, I will show you some questions. 
you will have one minute to read these questions. You can take notes in the one minute time if you wish. You have some note paper over there and your pencil. Um, and then uh, you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Please do not touch the question sheet. Talk about an object that reflects your traditions. Your one minute preparation time begins now. To become a very good user of the English language and score high on your next IELTS exam, practice is very important. So we have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you connect with a native English speaking tutor anywhere, anytime. Cambly has given this special discount code for students living in India, 29AEH to get a 15 minute free trial for just 29 rupees. Simply click the link in the video description. Cambly is the only app in India that lets you connect with a native speaking tutor from the US, UK or Canada. I have tried Cambly and found it to be amazing for learning new vocabulary and improving communication skills. Simply download and install the app and begin learning for those higher band scores starting today. Click the link in the video description. Now, let's continue. Okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. So the item that reflect my Sikh tradition is the turban. It's a unique style of headdress worn by all the Sikh men. It's a long piece of cloth. Its length depends on a person who is wearing it anywhere from 5 to 8 meters. It can be made with variety of fabric. It comes in different color. The color is chosen usually to contrast the shirt or sometimes the same. Or for ceremonies like red color is worn during weddings. Basically I wear 6 meter turban, uh, one that made with cotton cloth because it's very comfortable and breathe easily. I can get this turban from any of the Sikh temple and the shop nearby. Uh, it's a specialty shop, uh, deals in regional goods uh, and easy to find. I got my first turban when I was 10 years old from my father. We performed a tradition called Pagri Rasam in which he put the turban on my head which he inherited from his father. The turban is kept uh, safe and in a clean space and taken care of meticulously because it's a spiritual crown of our head. I am not only wear turban to protect myself from sun, dust and cold, but I also believe that it helped me to stay calm in all difficult positions. So without a doubt, I can say that the turban is the most important object that reflect my Sikh roots. Your time is up. I will stop you there. Can you please uh, put your note paper to the side, turn it over and your pencil as well. Now we will continue with part three. In part two cue card, the long answer, Randeep does an outstanding job. And again, overall, it's closer to a band 8.5. He structures his response very well, describing what the turban is, what it looks like, where it comes from, the function of the turban, and then the importance and his experience with the turban and how it is connected to his Sikh roots. When talking about an object, this is exactly what you need to do. Talk about its appearance so that the examiner can imagine it. Then talk about its or origin so the examiner knows where you got it, where it comes from. And then of course, most importantly, talk about its function, how it is used and what purpose it serves. And last but not least, talking about your experience with that object. In this way, according to the official marking criteria on the IELTS, the coherence fluency is about a band 9. The grammatical range is also close to a band 9. Grammatical accuracy for Randeep in this part is about an 8.5. Again, there are some mistakes with the S's 
as well as some slightly awkward grammatical mistakes with verb tense, like saying where instead of using the past tense worn, or using the simple tense where instead of using the word wearing, the continuous when combined with the I am in the second half of his response. Making these kinds of verb tense mistakes does lower the score because they are unnatural. However, overall, it is a very strong part two with good clarity, high level of pronunciation, and lots of great vocabulary. Rundeep would clearly get a band nine for lexical resource. Now, let's continue. Now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two and a question connected to your response. Aside from today, when is the last time that you wore a turban? Well, yesterday I wore my turban. Moreover, I used to wear my turban every day because it's a part of our dress. Let's talk about objects of cultural importance. What are some objects that reflect cultural importance? Well, there are several objects that identify a culture and religious background of an individual. Like for me, it's turban. For Christian, it's crucifix. And for Jews, it's hamsa. And other objects like ring signify marriage. And other objects still like wood clock for Dutch indicate nationality. Is it important for a society to designate some objects as important for heritage? Yes, I think that this is necessary to identify certain item as a traditional part of the background uh, because it gives a sense of belonging and often act as a reminder for the important culture. Just like my turban signals uh, my Sikh heritage and my values for the people I care about. What can younger generations do to preserve objects of cultural importance? Well, I think uh, the youth of today should understand the time and effort that has been put not only to make culturally important keepsake, but also the ideology and history behind this. Teenagers should spend more time cleaning and caring of these objects to give them respect, and they should store this object in a safe place. What can happen if these cultural artifacts are lost over time? Well, I think if such artifacts are lost to the individual and to the society, a part of culture is also lost. Since the symbolism and memory has faded with the time, it is truly sad as it is eventually lead to a loss of heritage for people and loss of direction for the future. Have the types of objects that show cultural significance changed over time? And why do you think this? Yes, I think it has become different over the year and century. I do believe that some objects that, that may have been of great importance to our ancestors are no longer in public knowledge. And I'm sure that there were some objects in ancient Egypt or India that are not common now. Even the turban has undergone some changes, especially the way it is tied now compared to hundreds of years ago. Do you think there will be different kinds of items in the future that will earn importance that are just thought of as common objects today? Yes, I think as the traditional objects have changed from the past, they will become different in the years to come. As the needs and ideal of society change with the social evolution, so do this the object that represent this. Can you give uh, examples of this? Hmm. So in the future, we may see the rainbow become a more common form of jewelry that represent the spectrum of humanity. Or maybe some people wear microchip as a symbol of our digital age. Okay, that is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking section of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark for this section in about two days online after you finish the other sections. And then you will have your official certificate in the mail in about 10 days. Don't forget your passport. Goodbye. Thank you so much. In part three, Randeep would likely score about a band 7.5 to 8, which is no surprise because part three is the most challenging in the speaking section. And that is according to the design of the IELTS exam, starting with easier questions and ending with difficult questions. This is because part three 
deals with specific topics related to part two, objects of tradition. So it not only requires more English, but also more thinking. And the combination of these often make it difficult to speak fluently and coherently. Indeed, in this part, Randeep does get stuck for ideas more often than in part one and part two. Also, some of his answers specifically to the last two questions are slightly awkward and require more attention to clearly understand. So, it is very important, especially for those upper intermediate to advanced level students who are aiming for those band eight and band nine scores to practice complex and compound sentences. This means using connectives and subordinating conjunctions in your speech. Subordinating conjunctions are words that connect different ideas and phrases like cause and effect, time, opposition, and condition. You need to make sure that you can use subordinating conjunctions in combination with advanced grammar like have been, present perfect, or past perfect. It's this combination of complex grammar with complex sentence structure that can ensure you maintain that high score. Now, for run deep, the examiner takes the average of his entire interview to arrive at that band eight score. Because Randeep did such a good job in part one and part two, this balances his overall performance. If we were just looking at part three, 7.5. But we're not. We're looking at part one, two, and three. Clearly, Randeep is a very good user of the English language and deserves his band eight. You too can achieve this level and band score with regular practice. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.